they say the angle of the vertex is pi over 3. That means this angle is pi over 3, which immediately makes interesting point. Phi, if you remember, is only this angle. So phi will be half of it, which is pi over 6. Pi over 3 times 2, so it's pi over 6. For the spherical coordinates, we're going to use that, that phi is only taking half of it, not the whole thing. And there is a roof of this um, shape with the, it's flat and has a given height. So there is a plane that cuts this infinite cone with the height 3 square root of 3. Step 1. So we want to find all triple integrals here. We're going to start with Cartesian. This is the last time we're going to work with triple integrals. We're moving away from this topic. So step one, let's do, um, well, they ask us to do Cartesian, cylindrical, and so on. A, Cartesian, which are sometimes called, Cartesian. what was, uh, sometimes they call rectangular, I think, lost uh, in my mind. Cartesian ones. So we're going to start to build the formula first for the cone in Cartesian. The equation, equation or formula of, of the cone is usually z equals uh, square root of x squared plus y squared. But this is for the typical pi over 4 angle of the vertex. And that's what's the hard for me to find the formula when they adjust the angle so and that's why people stuck it's not even the triple integral problem why it's so confusing it's actually the problem to build this equation of a stupid cone so the general formula actually i found it the general formula is let me finish okay thank you is x squared plus y well let me do z is z squared equals and there is a something in front of the square root well Either you do square it or you don't square it. Don't do square it. So if no square root, x squared plus y squared. And then this is the adjustment, which is height squared over radius squared. This is not a known formula. So it took me a while even to find it. But if you have this formula, this problem becomes immediately easier. Now we need to build our own current one cone with the angle pi over 3. So I'm going back to my problem and it says cone has a vertex with the angle pi over 3 and what is r and height so height is easy height is given as let's go up and look at the height oh did i ever write it down oh yes three squared of three right so the height is 3 squared of 3 then radius radius we actually have to calculate uh, this one is coming from a circle which we did not build yet so that is going to be confusing a little bit but radius is 3 I need to explain this in a second so I will explain the radius part in a second and that's how z squared becomes 3 squared of 3 over 3 squared x squared plus y squared solve for z z will be a hue just three square root of three and a square root of x squared plus y squared so anyway if you have this formula you immediately can keep moving with the homework problem somehow this is the most complicated part where you actually stuck so you cancel out three 3 in square root cancels out, but then there's a square root from this square. The radius comes from here. So, where does the plane intersect the cone? That's where it comes from. So, um, r equals 3 comes from the intersection intersection of the cone and plane z equals 3 squared of 3 so the cone has equation 
which we just built. Well, we, okay. The cone intersects the with the plane and gives you the circle. X squared plus Y squared equals three squared. So we will need this. And we start building the first integral. Let's put it in the red color. It's a solution, maybe even blue. It's a solution. So integral over V dV is integral, integral, integral. Make lots of space. There will be lots of square roots. One inside dz, dy, dx. We're choosing the order here. We chose z to go first. That's from 3D part. Yes. Yeah, I just realized it like a second ago. <laughs> Oh, no, no, I, I can't figure it out. If you plug in uh, 3 root 3 into z squared equals x squared plus y squared, that's how you get it. Hmm. So in the original equation, which is z squared equals x squared plus y squared, mm -hmm. and then you plug in 3 root 3 for z. Okay. 3 and square root of 3 for z squared equals yeah, x squared plus y squared, like so? Yeah. Then it becomes 3 times 9, but it's 27 now. Yeah. yeah. That's where I think it comes from, but mm -mm. only it's 3. No. <laughs> no, no. I, I think that you're supposed to solve it through trig, no? Yeah. yeah. I, I was hoping yeah, I to avoid doing this, but actually it became a cycle. If you know the radius, you can build it, but we don't know the radius. No, you, can, you, just, you, you have the information yeah. to do the tangent. Yeah, yeah. I want to avoid using tension, but apparently you have to actually do. So to find comes, so to find R and H, you actually have to use tricks. Okay, then I see tricks. Okay, fine. Then it's still up to you to figure out that part. <laughs> How they figured it. I will show you triple integrals though, because that's more interesting to me and I don't like these little things. But triple integrals, z is in a 3D shape. Z is coming from, let's see, z is the height, right? From the height point of view, z starts from this object, which has a name now. It's a square root of 3, x squared plus y squared and a square root, and ends at the plane, which also has a name, 3 square root of 3. So let's plug it here square root of 3 x squared plus y squared that's the beginning of the z height and then the cutting plane is here 3 squared of 3 for z so if you want to check that you're correct just plug it like this z equals does it make sense yes it makes sense z is from here to here y y will go after this and now you can choose to do y or x in order so we learn how to do that after this step you go into 2D and you can choose what to do with it. If we go to Y, we're going to use this formula here. From here, you either solve for Y or you solve for X. If I'm solving for Y, then I will do dy right away. If I'm solving for X, I will do for X right away. So if I'm solving for Y, it's going to be plus or minus a square root of 9 minus X squared. So Y is going from minus a square root two plus square root negative half of the circle to positive half of the circle minus a square root of nine minus x squared two plus nine minus x squared because this is a shadow of the 3d object cone and it's equation of a sphere so for whatever variable you choose that's what you're gonna do we chose to go from y goes from bottom negative part of it to top like so then x is just a number number on x axis changes from this point to this point which is minus 3 and 3 because radius is 3 from minus 3 to 3 for x that is Cartesian coordinates cylindrical b cylindrical coordinates are 
Now everything we're changing using formulas. We know that x is r cosine theta, y is r sine theta, and z have to be changed as well. So if x squared plus y squared is now r, then we can change z. z used to be square root of 3 times square root of x squared plus y squared. So now z will be square root of 3 r. So now we know what z does. That's good. Now, yes. R squared with a squared. Yes, thank you. Good catch. Now, we're going to have to figure out everything else. I will start building the integral and we'll see what is missing. So, integral v dv, still the same thing, it's still one inside, still triple integrals, have some space, but now it will be r dz. So, do you remember r dr d theta, right? But now we need to choose what kind of order it's going to be. I do know there's an r in the formula, and it's going to be dr d theta, but I will put dz to be first. z is still running from the same function to the same function, which I will uh, show you with a highlighter, like so. So, z is running from square root of 3 square root of x squared plus y squared, but that is r, and stops at the roof, which is the plane, square root of 3. So that's my z. If you want to make it clear, put it in the color. Radius is running from, radius in 2D, remember, in cylindrical coordinates, this is 2D radius on the floor. It's still running from a number 0 to number 3. That's my radius, r. Finally, theta is the rotation on the floor. Again, also 2D. Also 2D. Since the full rotation happened, it's from 0 to 2 pi. So this one was pretty fast. Yes? I, I know that because they're numbers, you could interchange the, the radius and the theta. Mm -hmm. But following the, the, the one that we did previously, would, would the angle be like <coughs> coincident? coincides with the 9 minus square root of 9 minus x squared, like plus or minus? Plus or minus. So uh, that's a good question. I think I understand what you're asking. This part describes uh, this circle in a very not convenient way with a square root and stuff like that. So to avoid using these guys, the one you're asking about, we are going to convert all of this into spherical into d. So this is polar, not spherical. These are polar coordinates. And polar coordinates, we know that uh, x squared plus y squared becomes r squared, which is 3 squared in this case. And then we know that theta here is this circle around. That's why we're completely ditching the negative squared and positive squared. Uh, no, I, I understand that, but I'm talking about the, where we have the integral circle. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't, like, to be more... Uh, like following along, wouldn't it be flipped? Oh, you, you, can, you can flip because these are flipped, yeah. Uh, usually people put theta at the end, actually. Somehow it's just more commonly seen. So, but you're right, since these are numbers, you could flip these two. But you can't flip the first one because it uses a function. Okay, your question was different than what I thought. <laughs> yes? Isn't it also pretty common to just separate the theta out? Yeah. Because it's usually, it's always numbers it's at the always, end. Be yeah, yeah. Uh, not only it's 2 pi, though. Sometimes it's pi. Yeah, yeah. It's on its own. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Most times there's no. Usually, yes, you're right. Finally, C is the one we just learned spherical. Spherical coordinates. And a spherical coordinates takes this idea to 3D, takes polar coordinates in 2D into 3D. Formulas there are more complicated. So Z, Z has a more complicated formula now, if you remember. Do you remember? Phi cosine, no. Rho oh, cosine, phi. cosine phi, very close, good job. So now we will use this. And X and Y has its own formulas as well. So we have to figure out that part now. However, we know, we know that z is already 3 squared of 3, that's the height, the roof. 
So now we can solve 3 squared of 3 equals rho cosine phi. And from here, now we can find rho. Because why not? So at least we can solve for rho. Rho will be 3 over square root of 3 over cosine phi, like so. So now we know how the rho changes. Rho is the radius, but in 3D. So it goes from 0 to this upper limit function. So let's start building triple integral, have some space. Formula for triple integral is radius squared, but it's rho squared. Sine phi. Remember that theta is used rarely. So theta is at the very end. That's how I remember. Sine phi. Then radius goes first, then phi, and then theta at the end. Phi and rho do not look uh, like at all. For you to know. Rho, radius rho, we just figured out, is going from 0 to 3 square root of 3 over cosine phi. That is radius in 3D. So how uh, far the fly in the air is away from the node, zero. Right? Now, theta is easy. We're still having a full rotation because it's cone. So in 2D, theta is from zero to two pi. Phi is always a problem. Phi is this angle from here to here. However, we are given the full angle. The full angle is pi over 3. The full vertex is given as pi over 3, which is a very engineering idea that you know the cone and the full angle, not half of it. So to find phi, you know it's going to be pi over 6. That's what I mentioned at the very beginning. So it's going to be from 0 to pi over 6 for phi. And this is the end of this problem. Very nice uh, multiple choice questions for the test, for the exam three. Multiple yes. Choice? Yeah, multiple yeah. choice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but we can solve it in cylindrical, for example. Correct. What do you mean, solve for cylindrical? Oh, you mean how do you want to solve it? Yeah, I'm saying, I'm saying we can in theory solve it in cylindrical. We can in theory solve all of them, I guess, unless it's unsolvable integral. That's the whole point. We teach it how to build all of them, and then you have to choose which one is easier to actually find this volume. Yeah, I think this one is the easiest one, yeah? This one barely have any functions. R square over two, plug, plug. Oh no, it's gonna be R, Z, and then you plug in and so on. Yeah, this one is the easiest one. I like this one the most too. Um, this one, actually not too bad either. Rho, rho square, phi, sine, it's minus cosine. The hardest one is definitely the Cartesian one, and that's why we try to avoid using this. Lots of square roots, we don't like working with that. U substitution and implicit, if you remember, U substitution and integration by parts show up mostly in Cartesian coordinates. Now we don't even use them and when we move to cylindrical and spherical, because it's easier. Yes. For the spherical, can you explain the pi over 6? Yeah. This is a good one. So you have an ice cream cone, you're holding in your hands, and you only know that the whole angle over here is given as pi over 3. By the definition, phi is the angle between this point or this point and the side of this z. Phi is only this point. This point is the half of the given one. So pi over 3 times 2, which is pi over 6. It's half of it. Yeah, this is better picture. Good question.